In today's screencast, we'll be discussing the at static method and at class method decorators and their usage in Python. This is often a confusion point for many people coming from other languages and we'll be explaining the difference between both and show you a few useful examples when to use each. As you can see here, we have a class defined called item, which has a few class attributes and an it, which takes a number, a static method, which simply prints this is a static method, and we have a class method that prints this is a class method and introspects few of the class attributes. In order to make something a static method, all you need to do is apply the at static method decorator. Class methods require the first argument in the function that you're decorating to be class, so you can introspect the class itself. Next, we're going to discuss how to invoke static and class methods. As you can see here, we have an instance of item, which we assign to i. We are then able to run the static and class methods on that instance. The cool thing about static and class methods is, is that we can invoke them as well on the class, which is what they're designed to do. So as you can see below, they do the exact same thing in both cases, and they both introspect the same exact way. So you can choose to run them against either an instance of a particular class or the class itself. You may now be wondering how are static method and class methods any different from any other function in Python. First, let's talk about static methods. Static methods can be considered simple functions that take arguments and compute something and return the result. It has no information about the class or instance it's called upon. For example, as you can see here, we have a static method defined in the class date, which takes a date time. The method here simply checks to see if a particular date time is naive or not by simply checking the TZ info. If the TZ info is none, that means the date time is naive and we return true else we return false. This is not any different from having a module level function that does the exact same thing. Next we define a date time object which is naive and a date time object which is localized. As you can see below d1 is a localized date time and d2 is a naive date time. Next we simply create a class, we sorry we create an instance of the date object and we assign that to D. We are then able to call the isNaive method against that particular date time. As you can see below, it produces false for D1 and true for D2. This is not any other different from simply calling isNaive, which we defined above outside of the function and passing D1 and passing D2. These are all functionally equivalent. Sorry, this this mask the first one. So just give me a second here. As you can see, these are all functionally equivalent methods. Now, static methods are just special functions. They serve no other purpose other than for organizational purposes. For example, this naive is naive method really fits tightly and closely knit with the date object. Now it may be useful outside, but we can still simply just use the class to call the is naive. Most of the time, you will never need to use static methods because you can simply define a method outside of the module level, which is easily importable. But when doing things that are needed to be repeated, you can simply bind it with the with the class that you're using and then call it like we just did down here. Next, let's discuss class methods. As we had shown earlier, class methods can take into account some class information. For example, they are aware of class attributes and they can also instantiate new objects of that class type. As you can see below, the new integer class, which has some class attributes, an init method, and a class method called new number. As with all class methods, the class is passed as the first argument, followed by x number of arguments and keyword arguments. In this case, we only have number. This particular method prints some class attributes and returns a new instance of the integer class. Just to show you that this is, isn't any different from any other particular class, everything works the same, nothing new. 
The new an interesting difference is that the fact that this new number method can return new instances of integer. So as you see above, we declared this integer class by simply going class, open brace, some argument, which it accepts in its init, and close bracket. As you can see here in our new number class method, it has the same um, pattern, if you will, but this will work for any particular class or subclass of integer. And in this case, integer is being passed, so we then call integer number, which results in it being the same as integer and some number. In this case, below, we pass the number 8, which then is assigned to the new number variable, which then prints 8. And as you can see above here, we ask for some class attribute. It prints so true. And then when we return the instance here to new number and ask for the number, we get the original number we passed in, which is 8. This is really the power of class methods, and this is oftentimes what you'll see people use it for, or to store some caching variables in class attributes as you move forward. Albeit, uh, there are other ways to solve this particular problem, but there may be some constraints where this may be necessary or even useful. Next, let's look into see how static methods and class methods work when dealing with subclasses. So here we have a generic method called anim generic class called animal which takes a color and has a few methods defined one class method which takes a class argument as the first argument and randomly picks a color for the child and returns a new instance of that particular class we also have a static method here that simply allows the animal to speak it's the default speak is a roar then we have a couple of subclasses of that particular type one that overrides the speak method so when an animal speaks when a dog speaks in this case bark is printed rather than roar and we also have a way of instantiating and calling the class for dog so we have this particular thing commented out i have that line commented out just to show you that when we try to run this without telling it to run on the superclass it causes a bit of a problem so let's just run through this and see so this will run fine, no big deal. So we have an example here that says we created a dog which takes the color brown. We print that color. So as you can see here, we print the color of the dog, which is brown. Then we go on to make a new, we try to make a new dog based on the instance, the D instance that we created above. Once we hit that, we go boom. None type has no attribute color. When we try to access the color attribute on puppy, we get uh, no attribute. This doesn't exist. You don't have it. You don't exist. Which is interesting. Because when this returns, it returns a none type. Since there is no return statement here, pup gets assigned none. And then they ask to see if the color is none. There is no there is no thing as color on this attribute. So in order to make this work, we simply need to init initialize a way to call its superclass. So all this says, it goes, this, the class I'm in, make a baby so we go call we call up to the class method now this is an explicit way of doing the same thing here so if we were to just leave this all uncommented so let's just delete it here just one second let's get that into the buffer here so we can easily get that back afterwards let's run that and then see what happens so as you can see this works completely fine we call we call d dot color d dot make and then we have pup here and then we check to see the color. This worked fine by simply calling this thing here. So let's just, for as an example, print the class that comes in here. So when it, when we go call make baby, it will pick color, print the class type, and then return a new instance of that particular class type. So as you can see, and this is the power of class methods that the class dog got passed in, regardless of whether or not the class method was defined in the subclass. The class that you're passing in is the class which class or instance which you call the cla static the class method from rather. So this time it returned a dog which is golden, which is quite awesome. Now let's put back what we had here before and see if we can grok what that does. So when we run it this time, it won't print the class. No, sorry, it will print the class, but it'll also print making a dog baby just before. 
we gotta we gotta reset that and then run this again see and as you can see this time it ran making a baby dog making a dog baby and then it went through and ran through all of the static method stuff required in here now this is an idiom that you may see in um, init methods where you wanna you wanna do some special behavior and then call your superclass to finish doing whatever you're doing. The same can be done with class methods. So let's say we wanted to let somebody know that something happened. We'd do that information here. So do do something dog specific. Then we would then call the superclass to finish up the remainder of the work, which involves making a baby. So you can either choose to do this. Or you can simply delegate this to your super class like we did here or you can just leave this leave this removed like we had in the previous example and simply rely on the super classes class method to invoke your exact behavior but the key thing to remember here this is this is this that this class method is based on either the instance or the class in which you run the method on so in this example D or in the previous example of integer the integer class so next let's l take a look at the static methods now the static method for for the animal it only simply returns and prints roar now for the dog method dogs clearly don't roar we want them to bark so we'd have to override this behavior so let's take a look by let's remove this real fast and see what this ends up giving us so we'll return the same and this causes all instances of the pup or the dog or this or the speak method called on the class to return roar. Now let's simply put that method back in here. Enter it. And that will cause now, so when the pup runs speak. So I gotta reevaluate that. I'm gonna reevaluate this. Now in all cases here that this the pup will run sp pup running speak will print a bark. The instance of dog running speak it'll print bark and the class running speak will print bark. This just goes to show that you can override these methods in your subclasses and they will do what the specific thing will do. So for example, if we were to go here animal dot speak, as you might tell, this will print war or now let's take a look at the, cla the class example of cat. Cat, we did nothing. All we did was override the, uh, sorry, subclass, the animal class in cat. So when you do anything running on cat, it will simply produce, again, here for the class method, it took the, it would, it took the class that which the method was called on, which is C, which is of type cat. So as you can see here, returns how to make a cat, prints black, and returns roar as we showed here when we weren't overriding it. So in summary, static methods can be viewed as normal functions in Python, which are grouped with a particular class. This grouping is merely a taste, something that's uh, individual preference for developer to developer. For the most part, they can be generally allowed. Anything you can do with a static method, you can do as a module level method. They take X arguments and or, and or key R word arguments and don't take into any account of any of the state that is around them. The only reason that you would end up using the static method in a particular class is to group some logic together in a functional functional piece. Class methods, on the other hand, have a little bit of introspection that they can do. Um, they are also very good at creating new instances of objects. And as we showed here with the dog and cat example, they take into account uh, subclasses when they're being passed through which make them very useful when doing things like returning new instances of subclasses or doing some type of caching again you can do these things whether you need to do them or if there is the best way to do them that's up for debate and we covered a few examples to show you the uses of each and things to look out for when using them so this will conclude our screen talk on static methods and class methods. I uh, will see you next week.